Hey, what's going on guys? Future Arts is back, and I'm here with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I motion track in After Effects with Element 3D. I had one tutorial made in the past, but that was like a year ago, and I've been getting a lot of suggestions to make another one, so here it is. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, I'm going to be uh, making a comp with my cinematic, and... Before I start really motion tracking, I'm going to pick the parts where I actually want it to be motion tracked because when I'm recording it, I'll first start playing the cinematic first, so it'll show me like, you know, the HUDs here and everything, and I don't want that to be motion tracked, I don't want the frozen parts either, so what I'll do is just go ahead to where it starts, so I'll pick right about here, and I'll drag it to over here, or you can split the clip to there, and then see where I want it to end it, and I kind of want it to end it right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and split that and delete the other half. And what I'm going to do now is create a new comp from that by right clicking on it and pre-composing. And then clicking on move all attributes into the new composition. But anyways after that I'm just going to drag this over here in the start and then like make the time of the main composition the same as the length of the new one I made. Which is like 12 seconds. Uh, yeah like 12 seconds is fine. And now what I'm going to do is uh, right click on my footage and this is where you're about to track the camera. When you click on this, it'll start tracking the footage and if there is a moving object, sometimes you might have to mask it out. But on this one, it's not a big deal. Like there is a moving object, but it's not like it's moving all over the place. It's just a player just, you know, running across the map. But sometimes you might have to mask that person out and then pre-compose it and track on it. It's going to take a while, so I'm just going to skip ahead to when it's done analyzing it and solving the camera. Alright, so after your footage has been tracked, it's going to show up a bunch of little, like, track points over here, like colorful little track points, and above some of them, you can get targets. And what you're going to do is just pick where you want your motion track to be, or, like, your, uh, text or whatever you want a motion track on here to be, and make sure that the target you use is somewhere close to that. There might not be a target on where you specifically want it to be, but there you can always change the location of it. It's just better to have a target next to that spot so you can easily move it around without having to find it where it is exactly with experimenting. So I want the text to be somewhere around here, so I'll choose this mark, uh, this spot right here. You're going to right click on it and click create text in the camera. And then what I do is just put my text, and I'll just put Artist Presents. Make sure to pick a good looking font, I know this is a pretty bad font, but that's just because I just didn't bother to change it. But after you put your text, what I like to do is make it like, uh, make the top text be as wide as the bottom one, so what I'll do is just like, make this a little larger, 72, and then I'll choose both words, and then put down the spacing between them. Let's see, right around here. What I'll do next is hide this layer, create a new one, new solid, and I'll just title this element. Before I proceed to the next step, I always like to save my project file because sometimes element might crash when you instantly add the effect onto your black solid. It happens to me a lot and I know that some other people have the same issue because I've seen some people tweet about it so make sure to save your project before you proceed and then sometimes in order to not have it crash I hide the layer and then add element but that, I don't think it's really necessary to do all that unless you really can't get it to work without doing this so after adding element I'm gonna put this layer back on what I'm going to do next is go into the element effect go down to custom layers go down to custom texture maps and I'll choose the map cinematic itself and this is going to be like the reflection on a text, and then I'll pick the text itself on Custom Text and Masks, uh, Artist Presents, and I'll put these two away, and then go on to Scene Setup. Alright, so once you're here, click on Extrude, and once you have your text here, you can put the map cinematic as its reflection by going into Environment, clicking this little drop down arrow, going down to Custom Layer 1, which was a cinematic, and then clicking OK. It might not show up instantly but don't worry about it it always shows up once you go back into the project there are many different bevels and materials you can use to apply to your text uh, there are a lot of presets already in here but you can also make your own one of my favorites is this one 
I call it one layer clean. It's just one layer of chrome, and it's pretty skinny. I don't. It, the reason it's not showing it's showing up as black is because my uh, element is kind of weird. It kind of glitches up a bit whenever I add an environment, but it's not. It's no problem when you get to the uh, go back to the project itself. But basically, my settings are to have chrome and the extrude to be at 0.3, expand edges at zero, bevel size at 0.5, bevel depth as one, bevel segments as three, bevel curve as one, and I think that's about it, but if you want to look at these other settings that I'm not sure if I've changed it or not, but you can look at these and copy these as well. But then after I do this, I'm just gonna go click OK, and now as you guys can see the text is in here, but it's not exactly at the spot I want it to be. I want it to be where I place my original text at near over here. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste the transform settings, the uh, I mean the position settings. So how you can do that is go to group one, go into a uh, particle particle replicator, go on to position X Y, and we're just gonna copy the X Y and then the Z. The first one is always gonna be X, so I'm gonna copy that and paste it here. And go to Y, copy that and paste it here. Go to Z coordinates, copy that and paste it here too. Now we have it here, but it's really, really tiny, so what I'm going to do is go to Particle Look, put the size up a bit to like maybe 30, and actually that's still pretty small, so I'm going to go to like 45 and change the Z coordinate so it's a little closer to us, and maybe move it up here a bit too. I don't know. Doesn't look too good yet. Let me put this up a bit more. Put it to 66. The Z coordinates a bit closer to us, so it's not exactly at the wall, it's way closer to us. Oh, and sorry, I didn't explain this already, but the Z coordinates is just how far away it is from the background to foreground. Is X coordinates is uh, left, right, Y coordinates is up and down. But yeah, I'm just gonna put this a little closer. I'm just starting to look a little bit better. And after you got your text, what I usually like to do is add a layer of a uh, few effects so what I'm gonna do first is add sharpen I can't add ambient occlusion so what I do is just add these specific effects to make it look a little better the reason I can't add ambient occlusion is because my computer uh, I guess the graphics card is a certain type that doesn't work with ambient occlusion turned on like whenever I turn it on it just like crashes my whole computer after adding sharp, I'm going to add a little bit of camera lens blur. Uh, go to repeat edge pixels, and I just put this at like 2. Nothing too much, just 2. And let me put the sharpen up a bit, not too much like that, but like maybe 20. And what I do next is add some glow. I have my own specific glow settings, so you guys can copy it right here if you'd like. And uh, let me put the threshold down a bit, like 50. Let me put the radius down a bit to like 50 and the threshold a bit up too. I'm going to change the colors up, maybe put like green or something. You don't really have to put glow, but I just feel like it looks much nicer with glow. Don't put too much though, because it doesn't really look that well, unless you're going for like a colorful edit where it's like glowing everywhere. But yeah, that looks kind of, uh, kind of, kind of decent. So now what I do after that is add some drop shadow. I'm gonna add that onto the element layer. Put the opacity to 100. Just, uh, all these little effects makes the motion tracking look a tiny bit better. This could have looked way better if we weren't using that crappy freaking font. So let me just go ahead and change that to what I usually use, which is Xperia. And uh, there we go, that's a generic feature artist motion tracking right there. You can always mess around with the font settings and the size of the text and everything with the text layer right here, even after you put it to 3D. But yeah guys, that's about it for the uh, tutorial. That's how I make my 3D motion tracking. If you learned something new, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to see more of my upcoming tutorials, and I also do post editing packs edits etc so yeah see ya